Hello everyone, Joe here, and today I'll be showing you how to make a beret for your smart doll. The pattern is available for download in the description below. To get started, get your pattern and go ahead and trace out two donuts and one circle. So these two pieces will be sewn together to create a really clean edge once you flip them inside out. However, if you have limited material or it's really thick, I recommend you only use one donut, sew it on, and then find a way to hem that edge so it's not just a raw edge. So another good reason to do this to thicker materials is to prevent really stiff berets. If they're too stiff, it will be really hard for them to stay on or to be malleable to the head. When preparing to sew your two donut shapes, Take note of the sides of your fabric. If there's a clear wrong side, do take note of that and sew accordingly. Right here, one side of the felted material I'm using is a little fuzzier, but I really don't mind since it's not that noticeable. So I'm just putting them together. Normally, if you do have right sides, face them together, then stitch the wrong sides facing out. So to sew the donuts, really simple. Just sew the entire inside, and once you're done, go ahead and flip it right sides out. So just a quick heads up. All of the seam allowances on this pattern are at a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter, so please sew using those measurements. So once you finish sewing your donut, go ahead and flip them right sides out and you're all set to press it. Once you start pressing, you're gonna notice that one side of the donut is gonna be showing the other side a little bit. It's just gonna be like a, oof, like an eighth of an inch of a little circle just showing from the other side on one end. And this is the end that's gonna be your wrong side. So when you're getting ready to sew, go ahead and make sure you use that side that shows that little bit as your wrong side. So when you go to flip your beret to the right side out, it'll be this full clean like outer edge at the bottom of your beret. And for those of you wondering what the heck I'm talking about, here it is. This is that little edge you can see it in the inner circle of the donut. One side doesn't show it, but the other one does. And once your two donuts are one, it's time to add the circle and create your whole hat. Once again, I'm reminding you guys in the video about the one side that has the little extra showing just to remind you to use that as your wrong side when sewing. For pinning and keeping everything in place, I do like using these little clips to prevent any distortion, but I ended up losing one earlier, so I ended up having to use a needle, you know, whatever, ignore that, pretend it's a clip. <laughs> Besides that, once you pin it and everything's all set, go ahead and sew at, once again, I'm gonna remind you guys, quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. I sometimes like to go a little bit past that, just so I can make sure that all three layers of the beret are being sewn. Trust me, it happened to me. I thought I was sewing through all three layers and then when I flipped the right side out, there was like a few little holes here and there. I did have to go back and, you know, sew over it and kind of distort the hat in the end. So I think it's a little better to just add a little bit of, into the seam allowance, just sew into it. And that way you rid yourself of any mistakes or any chances of a fabric being too short on one side or something like that, that prevents you from stitching over it. So another benefit from sewing at a bigger, slightly bigger seam allowance than the quarter of an inch or half a centimeter is that you can go back in there and trim any parts that are kind of weirdly shaped because let's be real, unless you're using like a material cutter or something, it's going to be hard to get perfect circles and they're not all going to be symmetrical and even on every side. So, you know, once you sew with a bigger little seam allowance, it helps you make sure that you're reeling in all three layers and sewing over them and making sure that it's clean once you're done because you can go in there and cut. So once you sew your beret and flip it right sides out, go ahead and give it a good press just to make sure everything's looking really neat and crisp. Alrighty, so this next part isn't mandatory, but I do recommend it if you want that full beret effect. Go ahead and cut a little strip of whatever material you're using. Don't make it too thin or it's going to fall apart like it did for me right there. But make it thick enough for it to hold its own, but thin enough for it to look a little dainty and cute. You could even pull it and like it'll thin it out a bit and kind of strengthen it and it'll curl into itself and make it look a little cleaner. But if you're not using felt like I am, it may be difficult depending on the type of material you're using. So once you do your little strip and it's all set, go ahead and poke a hole with a scissors or a needle. Don't make it too big, just make it wide enough for it to fit and have some little tension to keep it in place. I use my needle to poke it through. It's easier if you poke it through the wrong side, that way you could just pull it through, if that makes sense, on the right side. So once you pull it through, just keep pulling until you think it looks right. Once it's all set, go ahead and trim any X's on the wrong side. And before I glue on my little loop, I will be adding magnets. They're super simple. You just plop on some of that glue. I will be using all adhesive, which is basically like off-brand E6000 from the dollar store that I got. Works amazing and it's a great price. Just pop a little dab on there of the glue and then bloop your little magnet on top and wait about 24 hours for it to cure and set and you're all set. 
I also want to take this opportunity to let you guys know that I will be opening an Etsy shop to sell smart dog clothes and a whole bunch of other little cute accessories. So all of the things will be stuff that I have shown you, but just like in different ways and different materials. I'll definitely have some berets on there, so I do ask that if you use the pattern to only use it for personal use. Alrighty, so it is the next day and at this point I'm thinking, hmm, I, I really want to try another glue to see if it's a better alternative to the one I tried yesterday, which is the all adhesive or the off-brand E6000. So you can see it hardened perfectly, holding the magnet in place and it didn't bleed through or affect the other side of the beret. And I did another beret and I'm going to go ahead and apply some liquid stitch just to see how it's going to affect the fabric and how it's going to work. So right off the bat, after adding some of the glue, I'm already noticing that the material is just completely absorbing it like it's a sponge. It's seeping in there, but it's not really gluing. It's giving pure liquid, but no stitching. So it's not really living up to my expectations at all. So at this point, I'm just kind of realizing that it's not going to work out. It also bled into the other side of the hat, so I ended up just scrapping it, rinsing it off, and not using this glue for this material. That being said, it doesn't mean that it won't work for your material. This was some sort of synthetic felt, so I think that played a lot into why it didn't work, but once again, it may work for your material. So another thing I noticed about the hats while sewing them, it's probably like a material specific thing, but they were very stiff. So I did get one of my samples and kind of crumbled it up and pulled on it and tugged on it just to kind of wear it out a bit in a way, just to see how it would mold to the head a little differently. And I did notice that it made it a lot easier for it to stay on the head without a magnet and it made it easier to give it that worn look on the beret in the sense that when you put it on the head it doesn't just lay flat you can pull it down and it'll stay and it'll look like one of those bigger berets so once again i just want to give you a heads up that this could be a material specific thing so before you go ham on your beret that's already finished up and all so nicely Go ahead and test it out on a piece of fabric just to make sure that you don't damage it or end up peeling the fibers off your material and all that bad stuff. So just make sure it's like some sort of felt or something that this works with. Alrighty, so this next part is for my detail oriented people. So if you're not one of those, please leave. No, I'm totally kidding. But <laughs> this next part is just for those of you who like to add details or fun little cute things to whatever accessories you make. So here I am just adding two little grommets right next to each other side by side you know hammering them away which totally sends me look how funny it looks it just shakes the whole camera but besides that once they're all in I like to thread some lace or even ribbon through it and then tie a bow and it looks so cute and there it is I'm right there just tying the bow making it dainty and super cute and while I was thinking about it like these kind of remind me of like the Madeline hats do you anyone know about that book the little girl who lived with like the nuns or whatever and they would walk every day by the Eiffel Tower or whatever in their yellow uniforms with their little yellow hats and their bows and it totally reminds me of that not even the same color or anything they're not even that similar but it just totally reminds me of that anyone else read, read those books as a kid comment below like I'd love to know and once you add your ribbon or lace it'll look something like this Quite iconic if you ask me so now that we're done sewing our berets and adding our details let's try them on so to put on your beret go ahead and take the hat and your wig your wig must be removed first if you have the magnets go ahead and take the magnet and put it on the other side of the wig and this is how it's gonna stay on now if you don't have the magnets it's a simple just put your wig on normally and then just slide the hat on top of the head may take a bit to kind of like play around with it just to get it to fall down nicely and hold its place but with the magnets very simple it'll just literally stay on there and you could angle it tilt it move it mold it to the head or even bring down the sides so it cuffs the head all around it's a lot more versatile with the magnet if you ask me but without it it works just as good and it looks just as cute so now that the wig is on with the hat and all the good stuff it's being held and everything it's all about kind of styling the hat to make it look how you want it to look you know what I mean? Because a beret can be worn many different ways. Right here, it's kind of pulled down, which is one side you could do. I don't really show it that well. I'll probably pop a picture right now in a bit. But if you don't want that, you could totally keep it how she has it on right now. There are so many ways to wear it. I'll try to put pictures in between here so you guys can see the different styles. But once you do that, it's really simple and it's all up to you to determine how you want to style your beret. I do really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please do all the good stuff, like, subscribe, comment below, you know, all that stuff, show some love. Pattern will be in the description below. Download, print, use it, tag me on Instagram, let me know how it works. And I also wanna let you guys know that I did add a PayPal donation feature to the channel for those of you who love to give back and help us out. All the money will go to the channel 
and help us expand it, improve it, and deliver better content for you guys. To donate, simply head to my channel and the button will be there. But if you're on, on YouTube mobile, it will be on my about page. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Peace.